All right, SummerSlam 2012, aka the 25th anniversary SummerSlam, is officially in the books. I say for this SummerSlam, I thought it was it was good, but I thought it was tightest point at the same time. I kind of I like to compare this to the Royal Rumble from this year. You know, I like the show. I somewhat enjoyed it, but it just it felt like disappointing. You know, it just I don't know. Just because maybe because how big the pay per view supposed to be, but I thought it was just like the Rumble. You know, like I, I enjoyed it just like the Rumble. So of course, before the show started, we had. The pre-show match on WWE.com, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Uh, first thing we saw in the pre-show was uh, Big Show being interviewed. Him saying how he's a threat and everything to everyone in the title. Which clearly he's not a threat at all considering that, you know, three months ago he was crying on his knees begging for his job back. And then the next week he tries like a big old badass. Doesn't work that way, show. And from there we go into the United States Championship match. Uh, Santino Morello versus Antonio Cesaro. Uh, match was it was good, you know. Cesaro looked really strong. He was dominant the entire match. Santino tried to get the Cobra, then you know Cesaro knocked it out of his hand and went to the corner. And basically, Santino tried to do like the you know get to the Cobra the entire match, so he get that big you know finish and get it and win. That's not what happened. Cesaro ended up you know tearing the Cobra up, and Santino tried to go to it for like three minutes straight. And then all of a sudden, Santino pulls another Cobra from out of his ass. Yes, out of his ass, and he puts it on his hand and he goes for the Cobra. But Oksana's on the top rope, like, you know, fixing her hair or whatever. So Santino's distracted, turns around, Cesaro gives him a big headbutt to the uh, stomach. And then he gets the Gutch Neutralizer, Neutralizer, <laughs> for the 1, 2, 3 to become your new United States Champion. Very, very happy. Saint, not Santino, at Antonio Cesaro is the new United States Champion. Uh, maybe we can get him bring back the European Championship, considering that he is European. So, congratulations, Cesaro. Uh, then we have Triple H in the locker room with Scott Armstrong, and he tells Scott Armstrong that you're gonna break rules tonight. You know I don't want any disqualifications to count out. This match is gonna end by pinfall or submission, and you're gonna call like the most brutal match in your career tonight. So I was basically it for the pre-show. Then we go to the, the whole show. Uh, the first match we have is Chris Jericho versus Dolph Ziggler opening match. Um, by far the match of the night. That was a great wrestling match. Nothing but pure wrestling. Ziggler tried to run around and get away from Jericho from the beginning, but it was pretty fun. Jericho had some new tights. I said uh, Y2J 2012. I thought was really, really cool that he had. And it was just great back and forth wrestling. Nothing really complained about this match. It could have been better if it had a little bit more time, but I thought it was a fine, uh, good opener for what it was worth. Uh, surprisingly, at the end, Chris Jericho got the win when uh, Dolph Ziggler went to run at him, and you know Jericho threw him into the post and put him in the uh, Lion Tamer, and Ziggler tapped out. I was actually very, very surprised Jericho got the win here. Uh, he somewhat needed the win because he hasn't really won anything this year. Like, he hasn't won a big match at all. Like, look at the guys he's beating. He's got beating guys like Kofi Kingston. Like, those aren't big wins at all. I was kind of surprised that he won this match because I thought, you know, Ziggler, he just came off the money to make a win. You know, you got to make Mr. Money to make look strong, so when he cashes in, it looks believable. But, I mean, considering that Ziggler lost to, you know, a big name like Jericho, I don't think it made him look that weak at all. So it was actually kind of fine by uh, Jericho winning, but I would really like to see Jericho, not, not Jericho, but I would, I, would, I would really like to see Ziggler win that match. But Jericho winning, I'm okay with it, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, gets written off considering that he's supposed to live for, for the Fozzie tour. Then after that, we have Brock Lesnar backstage being interviewed. Then Paul Heyman, you know, basically cuts off and talks for Brock, and he basically says that, He's going to kick Triple H's ass tonight, and he's got two words for you. Tap out for the Kamara Lock. So, yeah. <laughs> Next match we have is Daniel Bryan versus Kane. Um, this was pretty short. It didn't get that much time, but I thought it was pretty damn good for it, what it got. You know, Daniel Bryan definitely was trying hard to make the match good, and I think he did make the match good. Um, the no, yes chance. That, that thing's over. <laughs> this, Bryan's probably the most over guy in the company, I have to say. He, he's the most over guy, I think. And it was just—it was a pretty short, good match, I thought. Um, Kane hit a choke slam, Daniel Bryan, but chose not to pin him because he wanted to do more damage. Because Bryan slapped into the match earlier, so he goes for a tombstone, but Daniel Bryan reverses it into a uh, small package. And one, two, three, Daniel Bryan defeats Kane. Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> then after the match, Kane is like flipping out. You know, he's pissed that Daniel Bryan beat him, and he's going to the back and he's just throwing trash. And he's, he's like, "Where's Daniel?" And Josh Matthews, dumbass, tries to get an interview out of Kane. He's like, oh, what's your thoughts on your loss? And he beats the hell, holy hell out of Josh Matthews like Brock Lesnar did in uh, before Extreme Rules. So Josh Matthews is not a very friendly guy, apparently, cause, considering that everyone wants to kick his ass. But uh, that was a nice little segment there. Then we move on to the Intercontinental Championship match, The Miz versus Rey Mysterio. Um, 
good match. I liked it. Thought it was really good. Uh, Miz and Mysterio. Honestly, I've not seen a bad match in the two. I mean, their WWE title match last year in the championship tournament. That was a really good match. Really, really good match. I thought. So this was the same thing. It was. It was good. <laughs> but uh, Mysterio hit a six one nine, and he went for the West Coast pop. Not the West Coast pop, but the, you know, like a the dive off the top rope. Miz, you know, like moves out of the way. Mysterio misses. Hits Skull Crush finale, one, two, three, retains the Intercontinental Championship. Very good match, like I said. And hopefully they have more matches on Raw or something in the future because they're, they're pretty good that, together, I think. Uh, backstage, we have Booker T, not Booker T, <laughs> Teddy Long and Eve coming out of AJ's office. AJ, not AJ, fuck, I keep botching, I don't care. Eve looking fine as hell, and Teddy's like, thanks AJ for blah, 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 blah. And then Punk goes in there, walks into AJ's office, and complains to AJ. And AJ's just sitting there trolling, not caring what he says. So, yeah, that was whatever. Uh, then we go into the World Heavyweight Championship match. Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio. This match was whatever. Uh, I think their Money in the Bank match was way better. But this was just it was just there, basically. Nothing really too spectacular about this match at all. Uh, just... Basically, it's basically like a Money in the Bank match. You just had Del Rio beat the holy hell out of Sheamus the majority of the match. And Sheamus has a comeback at the end and is retaining the world title. Which he does here. A uh, controversial ending to this match where um, Del Rio looked like he had Sheamus beat. But Sheamus kicked out or he got to the ropes. I forgot what happened. Because Del Rio ended up throwing Ricardo in the ring. And he's like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? And I was like slapping around. I'm thinking to myself... Del Rio, you're not a tin type, bro. You don't beat up your manager or, you know, your person you bring around with you. You don't do that. And he's doing that, and Ricardo goes to throw Del Rio his shoe to hit Sheamus with, but Del Rio misses, and Sheamus catches it, hits Del Rio with it, throws his shoe out, gives him an Irish uh, curse backbreaker, and one, two, three, retains the title like that. But Del Rio had his foot on the rope as it was counting for the one, two, three. Go away. And so it's controversial landing with Del Rio saying that he's a real champion. And Sheamus isn't. Go away! <sighs> Go away! <sighs> Not right now! <sighs> Go away! I don't want to talk to you! Go away! Go away! I'm gonna kick some ass in a minute. Go away, I said! <sighs> Go away! Go away! Hold on! Anyways, sorry for that brief interruption. I'm too far in the video, I'm too damn lazy to edit it out, and I don't feel like we're starting the video. Anyways, Sheamus retains, Star Rios throwing a fit, blah 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 blah. Uh, next, we go into the WWE Tag Team Championship match Kofi Kingston and R Truth versus the Primetime Players. Whatever match, on special. Kingston and Truth retain after Truth hits the little Jimmy on Darren Young. Bullshit ending. Primetime player should have won. That's all I gotta say about that match. Whatever, like I said. Uh, next, we have a SummerSlam Access video package. Whatever, just showing celebrities and everything. Whatever. Uh, then we go into the WWE Championship match, Triple Threat. Um, CM Punk, John Cena, and the Big Show. Um, it was whatever. I thought it was good. You know, Big Show basically beat the fuck out of Cena and Punk out the entire match. A majority of it. And it was just, it was boring to sit through. I thought, that literally the last five minutes were like the only good part of the match. And because you had Big Show down, you had Punk put him in submission hold, which I'd have no clue what it's called. So if anyone knows what it's called, please comment below because I have no fucking clue what it's called. And then you had Cena put Show in the STF and Show taps out. And so you have basically Big Show lose to both Cena and Punk. So Cena and Punk are both claiming they won the match. AJ comes, you know, skipping around in the ring. And she trolls for like fucking two or three minutes standing there. And she goes, you start the match. Okay, thanks for trolling us. Match restarts. Um, Big Show chokes lands both Cena and Punk. Uh, he goes to pin Cena. Cena kicks out. Goes to pin Punk. Punk kicks out. Uh, he goes to pick up John Cena. John Cena gets up. Gives him an attitude adjustment. Uh, Punk throws Cena out of the ring and pins Big Show 1, 2, 3. So Punk retains the WWE title, which I'm very, very happy he retained. Really, really looking forward to that. 
I'm not looking forward to it, but I was really excited that's going to happen because we're, we're mostly going to get CM Punk vs. John Cena at Champions now. But like I said, WWE title match, whatever, nothing special. It was, it was good for what it's worth. I'm just gonna say that. Uh, next, we go. They showed all the celebrities in attendance, like David Arquette, uh, Piers Morgan, Maria Menounos, and I fucking forgot what this guy's name was. I thought, I think it was like, no, I'm looking up on my iPod. This is very, very unprofessional on my part. But this is my channel, my video, and I'll do whatever the fuck I want. No one's going to tell me what I'm going to do and what I can't do. So if you're not liking this, <laughs> too fucking bad. And you're probably like, oh, I'm going to thumb down the video. I don't care. Go ahead. Or you're like, oh, I'm going to X out the video. Don't care either. You already gave me my view I needed. So later. Ass kicking dominant. Did did dominant. Poom. Brock Lesnar, did did dominant, 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 dominant. All right, hold on. Fred Durst. That's what I thought his name was, and I, I, I thought it was Kevin Durst for some reason, but it's Fred Durst. This dumbass is shown, and he goes, like, dude, it's a PG show. What are you doing flipping the camera off, you idiot? So from what I heard, he actually got kicked out of the building after that incident. So, yeah, just I just waited about a minute. I just wasted about a minute on the video for finding a picture of a dude that I'm just going to talk about for two seconds, so that was a great time waster. Alright, next after that, we have the U.S. title match being recapped, because I'm the pre-show, and not everyone watches the pre-show. Maybe you watch the pay-per-view, not the pre-show, so you don't know what happened. And they show Cesaro winning the U.S. title. And after that, we go to Kevin Rudolph performing the theme song, Never Give Up. I'm thinking to myself, piss break, because this concert sucked. He was terrible. When he was singing, it was like, put a gun to my head, it was terrible. Moments, I'm getting out of my seat for my computer because I'm streaming this fake review. There's no way I'm buying it. I'm getting out of my seat, and all of a sudden the divas come out. I'm like, hmm, interesting. And then I see Rosa Mendez. I'm like, God damn it! Now I gotta watch, cause <laughs> it's Rosa Mendez, dude, and she's dancing. Like, what kind of idiot wouldn't watch that? So I had to watch that, and I can't wait for this get put on W marks. I gotta watch Rosa dance in HD. It's gonna be awesome. Looking forward to that very much. So thank you, Rosa, for being so fine and almost perfect. Love you. No, literally, I really love you. Believe me. So, that was whatever. Shit concert, but thank you for Rosa for being there. Actually, I think I saw one of the Bellas there, too, believe it or not. I think I saw one of them. I'm not sure if that was one of them, because the stream was, wasn't was great quality when it was showing a concert, so whatever. Then we go to the main event. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. Lesnar! Alright, this match. I was su totally surprised by this match. It was a wrestling match. I'm going into this match thinking it's going to be a fight. They, I think it's going to be an ass kicking brawl. But it's a wrestling match. And I'm like, wow. Now this match, I thought it was good slow paced wrestling. For, you know, for two big guys that you know, haven't wrestled like wrestling matches in a long time. They were pretty good. I kind of look at this match the same way I looked at Punk and Triple H from Night Champions. I thought it was a good match, but it just wasn't completely what I expected. I expected a full out brawl and I got a wrestling match. So I was surprised by that. And just, you know, Lesnar worked on Triple H's arm throughout the entire match. He took his gloves off, and Brock takes his gloves off. You know he means business. And it was just, I thought it was, it, the crowd was dead, and it got boring at points, but it was, it was wrestling match. And, you know, I think people just wanted to fight, like I said. So, for wrestling match, I thought it was fine. I thought it was good. And, um, there's honestly not much to talk about. Brock did a pretty cool spot where... He tipped over the announce table, went on top, and jumped. And it looked like he jumped like 40 feet in the air. Man, it was insane. And just, it was it was good, I thought. And at the end, goes for the F5. Triple H reverses the pedigree. I'm like, Triple H is going to win. 1-2. Brock kicks out. F5 to Triple H. Uh, Triple H kicks out. Another pedigree from Triple H goes to the pin. Fucking Brock, you know, the ninja that he is, he fucking counters into a Kimura lock. And he has it in, and Triple H is, you know, punching him in the stomach, and Lesnar pulls tighter, and all of a sudden, Triple H taps out, and Brock Lesnar wins. I did not expect that at all. I mean, I honestly thought Triple H was going to win, but I said in my predictions video that I really, really wanted Brock to win, and Brock won, and I'm like, fuck yes. I'm really, 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 really happy Brock won. He really needed this one after what happened at Extreme Rules, and I think this, this makes Brock look really, really good that he beat Triple H. My problem is, what's going to happen with Brock? Because he's supposed to be gone after this show for probably until the Rumble from what I heard. So it's going to be interesting how they write him off. 
since he won the match. Maybe he can just come out and say that I came back to do what I wanted. I kicked Triple H's ass, and now I'm gone. They can do something like that, but it's it's gonna be interesting to see. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to Raw tomorrow to see what happens. And I gotta quote something from the match. Michael Cole said during the match that Brock Lesnar said he's not a superstar. He is a butt kicker. Yeah, butt kicker. Not ass kicker, butt kicker. I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm shaking my head but laughing at my ass off at the same time. It's, it was that funny. But anyway, SummerSlam 2012. It was good for what I thought it was. Uh, like I said, I thought it was good. Tad disappointing, but I thought it was good. So, that was my review. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry for the interruption. I actually think that probably made the video better, but you guys tell me. Anyways, thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments about SummerSlam, and I'll see you guys for my next review or next video in the next couple days because DVD on Tuesday, so you know what's up. But thank you for watching, and I'm out, guys.